Let's turn to exploring the Shema, discussions on the issues of Trinity, and take the next uh, half an hour or so uh, to look at this part of our commentary. We're within the context of talking about who or what is the Holy Spirit, and specifically we're talking about the Spirit that comes to dwell within us as believers. Is it the Spirit of God? Is it the Spirit of Christ? Is it the Holy Spirit? Your answer should be yes. Right, But if you think about it, since there are three persons to the triune nature of God, those of us who are Trinitarians hold to a one what and three who's concept of God, he's complex in his nature, then it's not unusual to have discussions of, is it God's spirit inside of me? Is it Christ's spirit inside of me? Or is it the person of the Holy Spirit inside of me? And would that mean that there's three separate spirits or maybe four because there's still Ariel's spirit in there, right? Kind of humorously thinking. But within that context, we, we were entertaining the question two weeks ago of, based on which spirit comes to reside within us, we actually enjoy genuine salvation. And I'm of the understanding that there is this overlap on purpose. There's a kind of a blurring of the lines when we're talking about, is it the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, or the Spirit of Messiah? And the answer is yes, because in the mystery of the Godhead, in the mystery of understanding uh, who God is, the complexity of who God is allows us to understand that genuine salvation cannot take place without the genuine Holy Spirit taking up residency with us, and more to the point where we're going to jump into my commentary tonight, is that we must confess that Jesus is the Messiah in order for genuine salvation to take place. So when we have this discussion on whose spirit is inside of us, if we say God's spirit and we leave out the um, understanding of who Messiah is, Jesus, as that Messiah, well then we cannot experience genuine salvation in that understanding. God's spirit is expressed through the person of Messiah when it comes to salvation. It is Jesus in me, the hope of salvation. It Christ in you, Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of salvation, Paul would go on to say. So um, that's the context of, of, the, uh, of my quote here. You can see on my screen. Eternal salvation is, of course, exclusive to placing one's faith in the Messiah Yeshua. And, I say, this type of salvation surely spans the distance from the Old to the New Testament. And we recall Yeshua's exclusive statement in John 14, 6, where he says categorically that he is, quote, the way, truth, and life, and that no one can come to the Father except through me, end quote. This exclusive truth statement, I say in my commentary, his truth statement must be efficacious in both directions of what sci-fi buffs would call the space-time continuum. So if you could jump into a time machine and travel back in time and ask Moses, how can you be genuinely saved? We understand that genuine salvation, Moses should come up with an answer that's um, uh, articulated in a faith in the Messiah who's going to come. This one that God would place his name upon, the angel of the Lord. He would probably use language that's tied to what we would see in the Old Testament already. You know, angel of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord, the captain of hev heaven's hosts, uh, the captain of heaven's armies, um, the word of the Lord that came to Abraham, right? The davar Adonai in the Hebrew, or the memra in the in the Aramaic, um, the angel of the Lord, right? The malach Adonai, or um, uh, something like that. Um, this is the concept, this one that God would put his name on, this angel, this, this one that would go before Israel, but they could not um, offend because God wouldn't, because he wouldn't um, forgive them because God's name resides in him. This messenger of the Lord, right? The, the, the uh, angel that um, Joshua encountered with sword drawn, right? Uh, you know, who are you? Are you for us or are you against us? You know, take off your sandals. Um, I'm the angel of the Lord. And, you know, Joshua bows down. Um, this figure, Moses understood, w pointed towards this person who would bring redemption. And so um, it's important to realize that within this context, the salvation that Jesus offers through his blood goes all the way back to the first man. 
There is no salvation outside of Jesus, and therefore, when we're talking about discussions on which Holy Spirit, which Spirit resides within us from a salvific perspective, which Holy Spirit brings about that genuine salvation of an individual, it can only be the understanding of the Spirit of Messiah that's dwelling in us. That's not to the exclusion of God's Spirit or the Holy Spirit. It is God's Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. That's the mystery of the Trinity all over again. So that's the context of our discussion here. Let's look at this. I say in my commentary, oops, uh, using Father Abraham as his example, Paul teaches this very truth about the exclusivity uh, of Jesus, uh, the name of, or, or the person of Jesus for salvation, right? Uh, the exclusivity of that he uses Father Abraham in one of his many spirit and gospel masterpieces that you'll find in his letters, and this time to the churches at Galatia. So we're going to pick up an example that Paul gives us about how did Abraham be counted as righteous. He does this in Romans chapter 4, but right now we're going to look at it here in Galatians chapter 3. Oh,